it's still so raw. I feel it. I feel it every time, everywhere I go, I feel inferior. Even when no one walks up to me and say, hey, you are, I feel it. I feel it at the airport. You know, when I show my passport. Do you realize that your most priceless possession is something that you can't see, weigh, or measure? It is possible today to determine the exact chemical composition of a human body. By precise measurements, we can know how much iron, calcium, phosphorus. We can determine exactly how much of each of the elements is present in a body. If we were to make these tests one moment before death, and then again one moment after death, it would be obvious that something was missing. But it would be something that you couldn't see, weigh, measure, or put in a test tube. That something is life. When they taught us, he said, they, of course, they taught us everything we know, even the language I speak. I speak English better than I speak my mother's tongue. Of course, I'm so fucked. This is, of course, yeah. So he said, um, when they left us, mm. they knew we would make mistakes. And when we started making mistakes, they didn't bother to correct our mistakes to date. So because, of course, we were created to make mistakes. So what they did was they met together in Berlin, 1884 to 1885. That was, I think, about six months. Yeah. So they met and then, without caring who we were, without caring if we would be able to survive, without caring about the kind of food, our culture, our language, and everything, they just met us together because the only thing they cared about was our resources, I mean, the things they wanted to get from us. So it was like they picked up the pen and the ruler and said, okay, you have to live together. They, don't, they didn't care if we have anything in common. It wasn't, so you have to live together. So like they forced us to live together as a people. So until this time in Nigeria, we still struggled to live as a people. Yes! Mine. This is mine. And mine is fine. This is mine. I'm 10 years. 10 years old. Yes. Do you know why Biafra is fighting? Biafra is fighting for survival. Is it going to win? Yes, sir. Nigeria was a creation of British colonialism. At the turn of the century, Britain carved out the richest area in West Africa, lumped together 250 tribes, each with its own culture, its own history, and arbitrarily called these people Nigerians. General Yakubu Goan says there is a good reason why Nigeria does not go all out in the civil war. We're fighting our own brothers, our own friends, our own probably colleagues that in fact we were trained together. Now, I accept them as my people. I don't call them enemies. They're not my enemies. That's how crazy it is. We don't even know who we are. The African child doesn't know who he is or who she is. The more you know, the more you understand the Western psyche. Um, a lot of young people do not know this. I'm just maybe fortunate to know. I didn't know all this in school, honestly. I got, 
I learned most things I learned. I learned on the streets. I learned from discussing with people. I learned from, yeah, this is how I learned. I didn't even graduate from the university. I dropped out. In the book of IQ and the Wealth of Nations, it talks about the IQ of the average sub-Saharan African being at 80. The IQ of an African American is normally at 85. White populations in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Europe, South Africa and the United States score really close to one another being at around 100. The reason to why IQ is such an important factor is because a lower IQ causes many detrimental factors in society. These include poverty, dropping out of school, unemployment, divorce and lower rates of marriage, welfare dependency, the child's poor motor skills and development, and criminal behaviour. So then, setting out these societal differences, which is backed by data, surely should be common sense, right? Think again. We are still expected to act as if these IQ differences do not exist at all, thus assuming that these societal problems occurring are not a genetic factor. I control. <laughs> yeah, let's see, my nigga. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. It's African way of living. It's African way of living. It's been carefully filed with time in the two front feet knocked out. So many of our young men have died. We have become most of us refugees. We have lost our property. We have nothing of our own. That suffering we have known for the past. Actually, <laughs> uh, actually, I feel so sad. Honestly, I feel very really sad because I feel that I mean this was not fair on us, and I also f know. I mean, I got to realize that my future was decided about. I mean, so many years ago.
most densely populated area in all of Africa, have been emptied of their people, emptied by the Igbo's fear of the federal Niger. No matter the federal government's assurances that they will be safe, the Igbo's flee. They have gone into the bush, leaving their homes shattered by shell fire. Their schools barren of students. Their government headquarters in the once flourishing administrative capital of Enugu, ghostly quiet. Nothing is left here now but a few scattered refugee camps. Nigeria was a creation of British colonialism. The turn of the century would have carved out the richest area in West Africa. Lots of young people run to Europe. Yes. We need work and help ourselves. We need not only 300 euros every month. Instead of facing the situation in their country and then trying to change things around, you know. We need a paper. We must. We want in Dutchland to live and work with the elements. What do you do? I am afraid because. If this keeps happening, it means we'll keep having brain drains. It means our human resources, our intellectual resources, everything will keep coming to Europe. Then it means that the story will never change. For their chief preoccupation is commerce, and war or not, business booms. The Lagos docks are choked with ships from around the world. Nigeria's palm oil and peanuts, its animal hides and cocoa, and its tin. It means that the story will never change. But the real prize in Nigeria, the overriding reason the major powers focus on this country's conflict, is Nigerian oil. British produce most of it. A United States company, Gulf, the rest. It is Nigerian oil. It is oil that Nigeria The story will never change. This isn't me. This is just the house I live in. Cut off my hand, that isn't me. Cut off my arm, that isn't me. Nevertheless, this is just the house I live in. Whatever it is that is really you or me is something that no man has ever seen. If people begin to see that, yes, this is very difficult, then a lot of things will change. You know, the idea of racism will change. You know, the idea of being superior we change because there's nothing like superior, superiority. You cry, I cry. You eat, I eat. You starve, I starve. You die, I die. Whatever happens to you, happens to you. So what's the difference? What? Okay. 
and um, it's about creating um, a new way of thinking. What if? What if? What if? Because, like I said, I realized that a lot of people, a lot of people do not what know if? like these things about or you for instance you are an american you don't know what it is to be an african if what i explain if? to you maybe you'd understand but you don't know what if what if can i read from this yeah okay what if Europeans and Americans would be denied visas to Africa? What if Nigerians became first world citizens? What if I were to be a this? <laughs> Power! Electricity! Why we are struggling? Food! 